Coming up here is uh, the third single from this uh, compilation project of uh, unreleased Roxette material. It's Soul Deep, mm -hmm. one of your first, uh, you know, it was intended to be a big super hit, right? <laughs> it was intended to break Wasn't out. Wasn't all the songs supposed to be like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it deserved, I think, uh, a better uh, fate than it actually, it didn't kick out the, kick up the door internationally. No, I mean, Soul Deep, uh, Soul Deep was a Swedish song that I wrote in, in 1980, Five or eighty-six or so. I, I remember writing it in Paris actually, uh, and and uh, when we recorded the first Roxette album, uh, I had written uh, an English lyric to it, and uh, it was it was the key moment in that recording session because it was the the song on that album where you could re really hear that Marie is, you know, amazing as a singer. She she never really had that type of material before to sing. Uh, but when she when she was singing solely, we were who was in behind the behind the window in the studio, looking at her and hearing her what she was doing. We just we were blown away mm -hmm. because it was so good. So it it became the first track of the first Roxette album. But then, as you know, uh, that album didn't go that well internationally. So when we did the when we after we had our international breakthrough, we we. Uh, uh, when we recorded Jora, we said we should we should give Soul Lip another chance because it deserves it. So we did another version of it, uh, which came on the on the Joyra album. And at the same time, we gave that recording to an American producer uh, by the name of Tom Lord Algy, who's been very s successful working with uh, uh, Stevie Winwood, for instance. He's a great producer and great great uh, mixing guy as well. So he did his interpretation of Soul Deep. He added brass, he added um, uh, trumpets and horns and sa a saxophone solo instead of the guitar solo. And did totally, he used, used more of the, of the uh, doo-wop harmony vocals in there. He brought them in. So it's, it's a different version of the song uh, based on the same recording. Uh, and at the time when we got it back, we didn't use it because we didn't really need it. We, the album was out already and, and we, we picked some other song as a single. Uh, so it, it's been uh, in the closet un up until now. But, but I mean, hearing it now, you wouldn't have been surprised if it had been like a top 10 hit in, back in 1991. Well, I, you never know. You never know. But it, it sounds amazing. And, and, and uh, for me, it's, it's like I said, it's a key track because this, this was... This song, this performance by Marie was what Roxette was all about for me, you know. I, I could deliver the song, Marie could sing the song. This is just a, a match made in heaven when it came to this particular song. So I was really, I'm, I'm thinking, this, I think this, for me this is the highlight of the whole Bag of Tricks compilation thing. 